Uh, hey, welcome back to Working Class Customs YouTube channel, and welcome back to Stable B. It's been a uh, it's been a long time since we've been here. Today we are here to talk about Vortex tire warmers. specifically do a review on these tire warmers, but also kind of give you guys some, uh, well, tips and tricks maybe on installing. That part's not too hard. Run a quick test on them, see how well they work, and then talk about the differences between slicks, road tires, and just kind of tires in general and why we have tire warmers in the first place. So stick around and enjoy. So first up, we got to talk about the difference between a road tire and a slick, All right? So racing slicks are known, their biggest difference that everyone knows is that it's it's slick, right? There's no tread on it. So as you can see here, this isn't the best example because it's been used, but that's all just from temperature wear. But there's no tread patterns. So you can see the tread patterns coming across. That's gonna help you get the rain out of the way, the dirt out of the way and everything else. When you go to a racetrack, you're not too worried about random things being on the track. And if you're in the rain, you're not running slicks. So you don't need that tread. That's the biggest difference. The first thing everyone notices and the first thing that everyone thinks. Some of the other things that people don't always realize or consider is the chemical difference inside the tire. We're not gonna go into super detail here, but generally speaking, they're built for all conditions. So you could ride these in the rain. I don't recommend it in like a ton of rain, but they're they're perfectly fine for that. That's why they have these little water seepage points. You can ride them in cold, you can ride them in warm weather, you can ride them fast, slow, through town, on the freeway for a long time, and they're gonna be able to handle pretty much all those conditions with relatively similar feedback. For you as the rider. A slick tire has taken a lot of that out. So the, the biggest difference is that they operate at such a higher temperature, that being the reason why you need tire warmers. Also, they take a little longer to get there. So there's there's like people out there that would say like, well, technically you don't need a tire warmer to run slicks at the racetrack. You can just go out and warm it up as you would your normal tire. I tell you that that's gonna take you a lot of time and it's just not as fun because then you're worried about tire temperature the whole time. And depending on what brand you go with, it'll cool down a lot quicker also. Tire warmers kind of make up that difference and they keep you from heat cycling the tire, which in the end is gonna give you longer wear life. What are the other big differences between a, a slick tire and a road tire or really a, a race tire and a road tire is going to be your tire profile so we have these side by side and we'll get a close-up so you can kind of look at that but if you look at the profile the shape of this guy has a lot taller and it it's a little hard to notice you got to kind of look closely but it's gonna be a lot taller with steeper sidewalls than your standard road going tire Right, and that'll be true too on uh, even some of your DOT race tires that are street legal. They'll have that taller profile. It can also kind of vary brand to brand. That's another big difference. And then going back to the temperature, again, your road tires are gonna heat up a lot quicker, but they're also not gonna get as hot. Your slicks are gonna take a lot longer to heat up and they're gonna get a lot, they need to be a lot hotter to have that proper grip level. The biggest reason I would say that most people switch to slicks from running a DOT race tire or just DOT tires in general, you get going to track days a lot and maybe you think that's gonna bump up your time. Maybe, maybe not, who knows? I like them, I run them, I think they're great. But the biggest difference that I see the most often is track riding to racing. And if you're racing, you don't have time to go out and warm up your tires for four laps before the race, right? You need them to be at operating temperature when you get out there. So the, the rule of thumb there is that you go, you get your tire warmers on those get them within the range of operating temperature and then you use that warm-up lap before the race to raise them up to that next level and get them at op temp and then you're good to go for the entire race so before we move on with the video i did have to bring up that uh yeah we're still in the shop and we're still wearing flip-flops because that's just how we do go ahead and get over it Now that we've gotten a little bit of information out for you guys on slicks versus street tires and why you need tire warmers, why everyone should be running them, let's dive into tire warmers. This is gonna be a review on these guys, Vortex. I believe this is version three. I don't know, I bought them so long ago, I'm not sure, but that's what's out right now. I really like the Vortex tire warmers. They're a great entry level tire warmer, mostly due to that price point. Price point is gonna be your like biggest difference. I promise you start researching tire warmers, you can go anywhere from the cheapest being probably the single temp sport bike track gear tire warmers that are, I wanna say about $250, all the way up to you could spend $2,000 plus on a set of tire warmers. I think the Vortex brings a great entry level option. They give you temperature control, different temperature per 
tire, right? So you can control your front and your rear separate and you can take it all the way up, all the way down and just like individual degrees. It's not just a warm and cold and they have a digital readout that shows you the temperature. So I'll show you guys some pictures of all that as we get into it. But I do think the Vortex kind of offers that great option when you first start looking out. If you're getting slicks or you, you know, you just started doing track days, you're like, man, I want to run slicks because I want to run faster. Tire warmers is something you got to be looking at. And I think the Vortex is a great place to start. They're also made here in America where I'm from. So I'd like to support our American companies. So that's why we do it. So while we're doing this review, just keep in mind that these are a little old. They're a little used. The great part about that is I've been using them for a while. And so I can give you that full honest review. Also, this is not sponsored in any way by Vortex. I just went on and chose between them and a few other brands. Uh, we'll get into that later. That's just my, my personal opinion. They haven't sent them to me or anything like that. Let's open up the bag, see what we got. First up, they I think when they show up, they're a little bit nicer rolled than this, but they're also very easy to roll up. That's like one of the favorite things I like about them is the bag is plenty big enough. It's not like other things you might buy in life where you're trying to stuff this stuff into a bag and it doesn't really fit. The bag fits it perfectly. Easy to roll up. The Velcro on there helps keep them tight while they're rolled up and stowed away. So you got your rear there, or actually that's the front. The rear, obviously, much wider. And then if we can get it out of the bag here, our controller and cords. This is probably, I would say my second favorite, but really just my favorite overall part of these tire warmers right here is this cord and controller and everything. This is all one unit. It's all from here. One plug. That's it. It's all you need is one plug. So a lot of tire warmers have a separate plug for the rear and the front and you got wires just hanging all over the place. You'll see once we get these installed, you still kind of have wires hanging all over the place, but I mean, it's a race bike, right? You gotta look cool. The nice thing for me about the Vortex is that it's all one controller, one plug, no big, huge mess to worry about. And when you take your tire warmers off, like, oh, everyone will tell you, the biggest thing to remember is to unplug your tire warmers when you take them off. So this makes it super easy because you just unplug one thing and then you can take them off, head out, and you're good to go and you won't burn them up. Very important. Always unplug your tire warmers. Maybe in a later video, we'll talk about what happens when you don't. It's not fun. It won't save you much money. All right, so before we get started, I'm about to install these. We'll turn them on and we're gonna do a, a live test, see how long they take to get up to full temp. What we're shooting for is 80 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure what that is, Fahrenheit. I know this is America. I was talking about how they're American, but they come set in Celsius. You can turn it to Fahrenheit if you want. There's a way to do that. When I first got them, I didn't realize that. So uptick to Vortex, you can definitely switch between Fahrenheit and Celsius, but I didn't realize that. So I just did the math to convert my Dunlop tire temperatures from Fahrenheit into Celsius and then set my tire warmers, which was conveniently the setting that came from anyway. We're gonna get a temperature to start with and we'll see what they actually get up to at the end. It should be around what ambient is anyway. So I got 83.9, we'll call it 84 on the rear. We'll go over here to the front and 83 to 83 and a half in the front. So pretty similar front to rear. All right, we're gonna get this unrolled and get it installed. So just to be clear, I learned how to install tire warmers by watching MotoGP races. <laughs> They're not that hard to, to learn, but I was like, I got my tire warmers. I was like, I don't wanna look stupid out there and not know what I'm doing. So I sat down and watched the MotoGP race and like scrolled to the part where they were installing the tire warmers and watched how they did it. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it that way every time. And it's worked. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you my method so you don't have to scroll through the MotoGP race. You have your tire warmer, you have your little Velcro strap here. You know, find a spoke, always come right up against the spoke, wrap around, take your strap, put it on, and start rolling your tire. The important part here is that you wanna be stretching the tire warmer out the entire time as you're going around. Uh, one, that's gonna help you so that you keep your clearance under your front fender or rear fender if you're on the rear tire. And then two, it's gonna make sure you actually have enough length when you get here to make it all the way around. And then you just simple Velcro on the end there and you're ready to go, we'll get that plugged in later. The biggest importance here is making sure you don't bunch up and you also don't wanna overlap. It's pretty hard to overlap because while well, the Velcro is gonna line up with the Velcro, well, you wanna make sure you're smooth all the way around. Otherwise you'll end up burning up a small section of your tire warmers and you'll be out however much your tire warmers cost you. We'll get into price a little later. We'll come back and do the same thing on the rear. When things sound weird, it might not be your motorcycle. It could just be your stand. So there we go. Got our rear installed. 
not bunched up anywhere. Uh, while we're back here and looking at it, we'll go ahead and talk about another thing I love about the Vortex. So for their price point, I'll go ahead and cover that right now. Everywhere I looked today and I just looked, they're under $400. So if you buy them right from the Vortex site, they're right at that $400 mark. I think Sport Bike Track Gear had them at $340. There were a couple other websites that had them as low as $320. So I love that price point. Uh, a little more expensive than that single temp uh, Sport Bike Track Gear tire warmer. Those are definitely like your just entry level track day rider wants to get into slicks and doesn't want to spend a ton of money on warmers. That is a great way to go. I've seen those. I've seen them operate. They're single temp. It's just a little light and I'm, I'm not trying to bag on them here. They're great for, for what they're intended for and they come at that awesome price point. But the reasons I would upgrade and go ahead and get something a little better. Again, single temp. There's no actual indication of what the temp is. And then the biggest thing for me is these guys right here kind of have this little shield. And the more expensive you get with your tire warmers, the bigger the shield's going to get. But this is pretty important because when you're warming up tires, it's great if the surface is warm, but that doesn't do you a whole lot unless your carcass and your rim are also warm. When you're putting tire warmers on for your first time and you know you head off for your riders meeting or whatever it might be at your track day and you come back and you're like, okay, yep, the now, if you get these, you're looking at the indicator and it's like good to go right at 80 or you look at whatever light you have and you, you've got the green light, whatever it might be for the tire warmers that you get. Make sure you check your pressures because pressures are going to be your best indication if you don't have a pyrometer and you don't want to, it's pretty hard to measure the carcass of the tire. You don't want to use the pyrometer on the rim or maybe you, maybe you don't have a pyrometer. Once your temperature gets up, give it a little bit more time and then check your tire pressures and that should come up to your hot tire pressure, right? So for Dunlop, they give you a cold tire pressure and a hot tire pressure. If your, temp, if your pressure hasn't come up, that means the inside of the tire is warm yet and it's just the outside surface so your first heating of the day is going to take you the uh, standards about an hour to an hour and a half let them sit on there make sure everything's warmed up the tires should be like almost too hot to touch the rim should definitely be warm to the touch the carcass at that point would be warm you check your pressures as long as they've come up usually it's about i don't have the exact numbers i want to say four to five pounds rear and six to eight up front that's not exact but your pressure should come up check for your tires they also differ per brand real quick before we plug them in let's go ahead and talk about power requirements these vortex tire warmers that we have for Vortex recommends at least 1100 watts. You're buying your generator or you're hooking up to an RV if you bring it or whatever you might be hooking up to, make sure that you check those power requirements. The warmers require a lot more than you might think. And I've seen people blow fuses and uh, I've seen people bring like one tiny generator, which is great for them every day. You know, they go to the track, they're doing fine with their little baby suitcase generator. No problem with that. Then they bring their buddy and their buddy tries to plug in his tire warmers and they trip the generator and they can't work all day. So someone is running cold tires all day or has to figure something else out. So be aware of those requirements. Uh, every tire warmer manufacturer will have them written out or they're all obviously all over the forums. Go ahead and get these plugged in and see how long they take to get up to temp. Since it is one controller, the easiest way that I've ever found to get these like go in the right place. Front is the top, rear is the rear. They would work on either. You could plug it into either tire, but I mean, it's easier to just read rear and front that way. So you just follow your line and then your power cord comes out the middle. And I'll get an up close shot later of how this plugs in. Plug it in in the back here, tighten down our ring, and then we'll plug in the front. Okay, so this is our connector on the Vortex. So you have this little screw cap, it screws on. They are just plastic threads, so they're not always the easiest to work with. Little uh, gasket in there, O-ring, sorry. And when you look in here, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's two levels. So sometimes it can be hard to remember which one goes which, but if you look right there, there's a little dent, right? And then down in the bottom, that's where that goes. So when you plug it in, and then I always try and bottom it out first, because otherwise it'll rip your threads apart when you tighten it up. So bottom them out first, put the threads on there just so it doesn't come undone, and you're good to go. That's how Vortex does it. And then I use this process every time. So the first thing I do when I get back, or when I'm about to leave, and I'm taking my tire warmers off, it's unplugged, and then unplugged from the tires. And then when I get back, I plug my tires in first and then plug in. So that way I never forget to unplug my tire warmers and I don't run tire warmers without them on the tire and burn them up and melt them. That's, that's what happens, by the way, is you melt them. So let's go ahead, uh, we can get our cameraman to start a timer, because I don't have my watch. We'll get them plugged in. They're gonna blink a couple times, and they'll come on, and what do you know, they're pretty close to each other. Got 28.2 on the front and 28.6 on the rear, which is, about what we saw with our pyrometer, so we're sitting pretty accurate. And they're gonna start warming up, so now we get to play the waiting game. So 
there you have it, 28 minutes and 13 seconds. Now, if you watch closely, you notice this red light is not on, and this one is. Watch, and this one will come back on here in a bit. There it is. And the other one kicks off, right? So these are set, I think, plus or minus 0.2 or some, something along those ranges, and you can adjust that also, but they have what's called a soft approach. So they're gonna come up, and once they get close, they're gonna slow down, and then they're gonna just kinda steady keep it there. But that red light being on means you are in temperature and your tire warmer, well, the, the red light being on means the tire warmer's on, actively heating up. There you have it, 28 minutes, 13 seconds. That was from around 83 to 84 degrees up to 80 degrees Celsius. So what did we start at 33 Celsius to 80 Celsius? And then we'll go ahead and get the pyrometer out, take the tire warmer off the back real quick and do a pyrometer test to see where that's at. Sweet, so we got our pyrometer. We're gonna test the temperature here in a second, but the first thing I'm gonna do, and you always remember to do this, is unplug the tire warmers before I even start taking them off. While I'm doing that, the other thing I wanted to mention is that if I feel my rim right now on the inside, it's got a little bit of heat in it, but not fully enough. So again, I always recommend checking uh, pressures and that'll give you their actual indication that the inside of your tire, the air, the carcass, and the rim have all gotten warm because it's important to get that temperature all the way through, otherwise you'll lose it in your first lap rather than heating up higher. So we go ahead and take this off a little bit, stick our pyrometer on here, and see what temperature we get, if I can get it to meet. So I'm getting about 145. There's 150. I don't have the best pyrometer. So I, I don't actually use this at the track. Again, I just go off pressures, kind of like I was mentioning. The digital, I forget what they're called. There's about 150. It's looking like is where we're at, which all. I also don't know how accurate this pyrometer is, to be fair. About a half hour. Again, I definitely recommend, and, and you'll see it all over the forums and whatever when you do your own research, but definitely just put your tire warmers on early in the morning, get the tires heated up and just let them sit there for quite a while in the morning, about an hour and a half to really just make sure that everything is soaked through with heat so that when you get out on the track, you don't just immediately shed all that heat. Again, also we started at 80 degrees here, just over 80 degrees. So that's pretty warm to begin with. I've started up in the, the PNW. Sometimes you get a 40 degree morning. You put your tire warmers on, your little digital Celsius reader reads like six degrees. And you're like, whew, it's cold. Give your tires plenty of time to get all the way warmed up and let them go through a couple cycles. Usually take your bike down to tech and as soon as you get back from tech, throw the tire warmers on and let them just sit there until you go out for the first time. And then if you're running Dunlops, especially I've heard, they cool down super quick. So you wanna get them back on as quick as possible. And don't forget to unplug your tire warmers before you take them off. You will burn them out. So thanks for watching today. That just about finishes up our review of the Vortex dual temp tire warmers. That's what they call them as dual temp. That's dual control, not dual temp. They have any temperature. You can set them up and down any temperature, digital readout. I will say, I think they are definitely the cheapest tire warmers you can get that give you a digital readout of what your temperature actually is, which is pretty awesome. I enjoy it a lot. Kind of makes it so you don't need a pyrometer. And then that price point coming in right around the 350 mark average is what we'll call it, depending on what website you use. And you're getting the full curtain, separate control of the front and rear, indications of what your temperature is, adjustability up and down, individual temperature adjustability, right at that awesome price point. Great beginner entry level. For those of you out there that have been running tire warmers already and you got maybe other opinions or more information, or any helpful tips, go ahead and throw those in the comments down below. Or maybe I missed something. I don't know, but I've been running these for, I think, three to four years now, and I've loved them. Never had an issue with them. They haven't torn on me. I'm very careful to making sure that I always unplug them because you will burn them up that way. I know I've said that about six times, but you got to unplug your tire warmers before you take them off. You'll burn them up and you'll waste your 400 bucks. There are other options out there. I think we'll be getting some more videos out for you guys, so stay tuned on the channel. Go ahead and subscribe and click that notification icon so that you're aware of when the next video is coming out. And if you haven't already, go check out JK Moto Podcast, a weekly podcast. Love to talk about motorcycles, motorcycle racing, guests here and there. Just track days and just all around good moto content. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. Let me know in the comments again down below. If I missed anything, throw a like on the video. Thanks for being here. We'll see you next time.